All right, now Descendant OS is what we are talking about today. I know this sounds different. This is a ROM which is not that famous. It used to come in Android 11 flavor as well. And now it is available on the Mi 11X in version Android 12. Now, the moment I saw this particular ROM, the flashing method was a little different. So probably later I'll make an installation guide as well. I am using it since yesterday and this is a very, very unique ROM. It has a lot of differentiating features and it works really, really smooth. So in today's video, we're going to check out Descendant OS as a whole this review is not specific to the mi 11x but there will be some things which i will mention which are specific to this device because of course we are using it on this particular phone but descendant os based on android 12 as a whole how good it is what are the features what are the differentiating factors and stuff like that is what we are going to talk about so before we get into the details if you haven't already please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this if you think you like chatting with like-minded people well please join us on instagram twitter facebook we have more than 1500 members in our telegram channel who have similar devices helping each other so join us there and last but not the least if you think the hard work is worth the effort please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. All right, so first let's see for this particular device what we have here, Descendant Official Initial Build Android 12, updated on Christmas once again, that is 25th of December. You have download firmware screenshot support. So you do have a support group. If you have any specific questions to this particular ROM, you should actually go to that Telegram group and ask those questions. You can always ask for help in our groups, but if you don't find the answer, you can go there as well, right? Now, installation guide is download and flash the official TWRP format data, sideload your firmware, sideload descendant build, reboot. Bugs, if you discovered any bug and you had read notes, feel free to report me. Notes, Moto Dolby couldn't work without linked patched firmware. Moto Dolby, uh, yeah, that's an Indonesian language, I believe. So that's everything that is there to the ROM and let's go ahead and talk about descendant OS as a whole. Now, this does come with Android 12 and it does come with a bunch of smoothness, at least on the Mi 11X, it's doing a great job. It's working absolutely fine. The battery backup is pretty decent and we will talk about those things one by one. But the moment you boot into this particular ROM, you will see that this is a very, very standard and normal Android 12 custom ROM scene. You just have a few icons over here. You have your typical pixel wallpaper, uh, calendar widget at the top, you have these quick tiles which look just like Android 12 but this dashboard and stuff they can be enabled and they look different so we'll talk about them but I'll tell you this there have been so many Android 12 custom ROMs for the Mi 11X which are smooth this definitely has something going for it I don't know what they've done but the smoothness on this particular ROM is just next level and that is really really appreciated now to the left you do have Google feed which works in its 120 Hertz glory without a stutter without a jitter works absolutely fine Apart from this, you have the Google search pill at the bottom with assistant shortcuts working absolutely okay. Now, if you press and hold over here, you do have home settings, which will take you to the famous pixel launcher, which gives you options like at a glance, add app icons to home screen, swipe to access Google app, overview suggestions, suggestions, search your phone, allow home screen rotation and stuff like that. Now, apart from this, yes, you do have your Android 12 widgets, which are present and they work absolutely fine. So if you go to wallpaper and style, you do have the complete Monet UI working absolutely okay and doing a great job. For, if, for example, if you go to change wallpaper, you can see we can choose a different wallpaper this time, say this one. And even in the preview, the color of the UI has changed. You have themed icons over here doing a great job. So Monet UI not only looks good, it's working absolutely cohesively, absolutely fine. Now, if you swipe from the top to bottom, you will see that you not only have the Android 12 quick tiles, the edit menu for these quick tiles is at the top, the setting shortcut is at the top. So this Android 12 custom ROM looks different compared to other mainstream Android 12 custom ROMs. You do have the data dashboard, which tells you your Wi-Fi usage for 24 hours, SIM usage for 24 hours, and the average speed meter for your internet connection. That's good as well. You have your carrier over here. You have your weather, the time, date, and day. That is really neat. Battery estimates, silent mode, vibration mode, your Wi-Fi icon and your signal indicator. So just in this amount of section, there is so much data that is really, really neat. Now you do get things like screen recorder, which is built in. It allows you to record internal and external audio. Just like any USB based ROM, it gives you a timer and then it starts recording. 
So as you can see over here, the ROM is really, really smooth even after screen recording is in action. And why shouldn't it be, right? Because this is a Mi 11X we are talking about and Mi 11X comes with a Snapdragon 870 which gives you decent performance. So let's go ahead and stop the recording over here. And as always, let's quickly go ahead and increase the volume a little bit. Let's play this particular... Splendid stuff, you know, recording is doing a great job as well, no problem whatsoever. Furthermore, if you go to multitasking menu, just have a look at these smoothness. This smoothness is just next level. You have a clear all button over here. You do have the screenshot option, which gives you access to long screenshots as well. And then you have the select option, which works absolutely fine as well. If you press over here, you have split screen, free form. So, you know, even on Android 12, any sort of customization that you can ask for, it is present in Descendant OS and it is working as expected. Now, if you talk about the camera situation, it does come with a very, very basic camera application, which works fine, but Google Camera Go would have been appreciated. But nonetheless, you can always go ahead and install that. And just look at the smoothness of these app icon animations. These are fast and smooth and the bouncy effect makes it look really, really nice. Right now, if you go to the lock screen, let me show you something more. See how different the always on display clock looks, as you can see over here. And the moment you lock the phone, you have this Android 12 animation going on and that works absolutely fine. The fingerprint scanner is also working great. So if you go to settings, let's go to about over here and let's go to the Android version 12. This is a December security patch. The kernel, of course, will vary from device to device, but this one is coming with the official descendant kernel. And this is the latest build made on the 24th to 25th of December is what we are talking about. Now, moving on, let's actually explore this particular ROM. You will see that it comes with a very standard Android 12 UI with Monet UI giving that color gamut, which makes it look even better. So if you go to network and internet, the whole UI of this particular ROM in settings as well is different. So you click on open, you go to Wi-Fi settings. Over here, you go to mobile network settings, data saver, hotspot and death ring, and then you have Wi-Fi and all the other options over here. Furthermore, you have connected devices and the open menu being present over here as well. Now, if you go to apps, you will see that you have default apps, game settings. That means you do have the Android 12 game dashboard, which is a really, really good thing. So, you know, this is this is the way you complete an Android 12 ROM, not only customization, but by giving the default Android 12 features as well. Now, if you go to notifications, you do have notification history over here, which is present and it works absolutely fine. There is something called as don't touch my heads up. Avoid launching app after touching the heads up that is there. You have app settings over here. So you can individually control notifications of apps. That is a really, really good thing as you can see over here. So a lot of good things being added in this particular ROM. Bubbles are present, but not supported by WhatsApp and some leading applications. But apart from this, hide silent notifications in status bar, allow notifications snoozing. So even in notifications, you do have quite a lot of options. Now moving on, if you go to battery, you will see that you have the battery indicator option over here. You can choose the percentage style. You do have thermal profiles over here, which gives you benchmark gaming and a bunch of other things, but it doesn't give you access to the 180 Hertz touch sampling rate, but that is present somewhere else. For example, if you go to sound and vibration, again, you know, you have a different UI, but the same options. And you have clear speaker, you have reorient, so button shortcuts are present here as well. So the do not disturb option is present over here. You can set the schedules, the gaming schedule is present as well. Duration for quick settings until you turn off, display options for hidden notifications. Now, the more deeper you go into Descendant OS, you will see that it just keeps you giving more and more options, which is a really, really good thing. Now, moving on, if you go to display, you have the screen clock style. That is what I showed you, right? This is the stock lock screen clock or ambient display clock. This is the Oxygen OS look. This is the Sony look and Cupertino is what we are using now because it looks different and looks fancy. Now, you do have something called as notification lights for a device like the Mi 11X. That is a welcome addition because you have something different, like something that is not MIUI, but gives you that sparkle of customization and that is good. You can choose the accent of your notifications and all the other things and different animations are present here as well. 
Now, if you go to the lock screen, you have privacy customization, add text to home screen. Again, you have clock style and ambient lights over here. You can schedule the always on display as well. So those basic features are not forgotten. They are still present. Now, under display features, you have double tap to wake. So that is a good thing. You can go ahead and personalize the Monet engine, which is really, really good. And this comprehensive customization menu is really, really neat. Now you do have 60 and 120 hertz refresh rate. You don't have 90, unfortunately. And as I said, 180 hertz touch sampling rate might not be present, but you do have an option of increased touch sensitivity. Right now you have your standard wallpaper and style feature over here. As you can see, I can change the accent colors from here and they work really, really nice. So that is good. Now, if you go to security, you will see that you have fingerprint over here, but you don't really have face unlock. That is missing in almost all the Android 12 custom ROMs, so nothing new here. Then if you go to privacy, you have a privacy dashboard for encryption and credentials. As you can see over here, devices encrypted. You have your notification customization over here, as you can see. And then you have the privacy dashboard over here. Permission manager, camera access, microphone access, show passwords fake developer option status. These are the things that I've not seen in a long time. Get suggestion based on people, apps, and content you interact with. So private compute core. So this is sort of an AI thing, which is really, really neat. Autofill service and all those options are present as well. Right now, moving on, if you actually see over here, you have something called as digital health. This is a baked in feature to this particular ROM. Although I didn't see the COVID dashboard updating, but it's good to see that a custom ROM team is thinking about that right so you have digital comfort over here sleep notifications screen on notification screen statistics and then you have your digital well-being and parental controls as well now moving on if you go to system this is where you will see a lot of customization for example language input customization is there then you have gesture customization so you have quickly open camera system navigation one-handed mode press and hold the power button for assistant swipe to screenshot which gives you access to capture more that is your extended screenshot and that works fine double tap to lock screen and then you have something called as gestures magic now this is a third party application which is integrated in this particular rom so upon pickup gestures call will be silenced answer call hovering the phone near your ear shush to flip call reject call flip media halting resume media so, you know, all these features are present built into the ROM and that is always a good thing. Although you do have live translate and backup multiple user options and reset options available as well. So, you know, if you ask me, Descendant OS comes as a surprise, as a breath of fresh air, which probably does everything. Now, even if you go to say, you know, safety net, your safety net passes by default. If you go to the Google Play Store, the Play Store certification is present, so you will not have any issues related to your banking applications. Widevine L1 is present, so that works absolutely fine. Now let's quickly go ahead and talk about the benchmark number. Now, as you can see over here, the device throttled to 79% of its max performance and the average score was 214,895 GIPS, which is a decent score. The max score was 243,646 GIPS, so that's good. Now, if you go to Antutu benchmark over here, this is a very, very good score, 692,227. So that's a decent and good Antutu score. If you talk about heating, the device did heat to 7.5 degrees above the normal temperature and the battery dropped by 4%. Now moving on, the last thing that we have to check is Geekbench over here. So as you can see, the Geekbench numbers are pretty impressive as well. Very close to stock, although the multi-core score is around four, 500 less because this device on multi-core scores on stock ROM 3300. But 949 single core, 2890 multi-core is pretty decent. Now I did take a screenshot of some battery usage that I had. So as you can see over here, we had around 38 minutes of screen on time and then we charged the phone as well. So I might not have the complete battery backup and complete charging speeds because I just installed it yesterday and I will be candid on this. But Trust me, the charging speeds and the battery backup is pretty decent from whatever usage that I've had with this particular ROM. So if you ask me, all in all, Descendant OS for the Mi 11X is doing a great job. If you have official support of this ROM on any other device, go ahead and give it a try. This ROM will surprise you because you see things like these, the data dashboard and the whole customization options and the whole UI being smooth and benchmark numbers being great is always a good experience. I would say slap a Gcam on this and call it a day. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this amazing new ROM. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at Phone Ops. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.